Hi there, it's Sandy from Soaring Through Second, and I'm going to share with you today how to get organized or get yourself a little more organized um, during back to school time using Google Forms. Um, Google Forms is a great way to um, get all of that information that you need from your students and your families and your parents at the um, beginning of the school year. Um, it's a great way to organize it and it places it all in one spot where you're easily able to find it um, when you need it again. So what you want to do first is you want to make sure that you have a Google account. I'm going to log into one of my accounts here and then we're going to go to my Google Drive. So I'm just going to type in Drive google.com and my drive will show up here and this is where all of my documents and forms and spreadsheets are housed. Um, I'm going to click new and I'm going to go all the way down to more and click form because I want to create a google form and when I do that this is the screen that will pop up. It's not very pretty right now but we'll make it look nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do, um, I'm going to rename the form. So what I want to do is I want to gather all of my back to school information about my students from parents um, and I want them to fill out this form. So this is essentially going to be my back to school, all about your child, name, address, phone number, all that good stuff, um, spreadsheet and form. So I'm going to go ahead and just rename it. Um, so my name, Patterson's second grade class and then I'll put 2015-2016 because it'll be for the following school year. So now my, you can see up here, my form is now has a name. And so now I want to go ahead and I want to start adding my questions in. So the first question or the first thing that I want the parent to fill out is their student's name. So I'm just going to write student's name. So that will be where the question goes. The question type, it's not going to be multiple choice. I'm just going to click on this drop down menu and it's going to give me a bunch of options here of different question types. This is going to be a text based question because the parent is going to type in their child's name right here. And I think I'm just to make sure that we're clear, I'm going to put student's full name. Um, I'm also going to make this a required question by checking that um, box right there. By making it a required question, the parent cannot submit it until all of the questions that are required have been filled out. So there's no more accidentally skipping over an important question and having to resend the paper home the next day and then hopefully crossing your fingers that you get it back. Um, all of the questions for me for this form are going to be required, so I'm just going to make sure to, to check that every time. Once I'm done, so that'll be my first question, I'll just click done, and then I can go ahead and add another item. So I want to go ahead and I want my student's um, address. So I'll just put home address. And again, the question type will be a text question because the parent will be typing in the student's address. And I'll click done. Um, and I'll just keep going down the line and adding in all of the information that I, I want to receive from parents. So the next thing might be um, mom's full name, dad's full name, any siblings there. All those questions will go on here. I'm not going to do all of those just for the sake of time, um, but you, I'll show you how. So mom's um, phone number, so I would ask for mom's cell phone number. And that's again going to be a text question so they can type in their cell phone number. I'm going to make it a required question and press done. The next question I'm going to, I want to know if it's okay to text mom's cell phone number. So I'm going to ask, is it okay to text um, mom's cell phone? And since this is kind of a, I'm going to change it instead of doing, or I can do multiple choice. So I'll say first option is yes. Second option is no thank you. Um, I'm going to make it a required question because I want to know if it's okay to text that phone number if I need to. Um, and then the parent can either put yes or no either way. So then I would just keep going down and adding all of my, all of the information that I need from the parents. Um, just glancing at this, I can see that um, anytime it's a required question, there's going to be a red star next to it. And I noticed that this one does not have a red star and I want it to be a required question. So I'm just going to go to this button to edit the question and recheck that required question and then click done. And then now all of my questions are required. So again, the parent has to fill out the, all of these questions in order to submit the form. You also see if I didn't want this question there anymore, I could press the trash can to delete it or if I wanted to duplicate it, like maybe I want to duplicate this question. Um, instead of saying mom, I'll put dad's cell phone number and click done. 
Now, if I want to um, rearrange these question order, if I don't like the order that they're in, all I basically do is click on it, drag it, and drop it to where I do want it to be. So I would just keep going through and adding all of my all of the questions and the information that I want um, in there. So let's see, I'll put this underneath there. So now my form pretty much looks the way that I want it to. So I have my title, I would have all of my questions here. I would have more questions than this, um, obviously, if I was really going to use this. But just for this tutorial, I'm just going to go kind of quickly here. Um, you can also, I wanted to point out, you can also change the theme of your form. So when parents see it, this is what it'll look like. Um, you can go down the bottom, down the line here and choose something that maybe you think might look a little more visually appealing, maybe something like this for back to school. And then I can see what this is on this screen is what the parents will see. So I'll just leave it at that one. I can view the live form, which is what the form will look like when parents actually go to it. Okay. And then um, I can also, I don't need to view the responses yet because there obviously are no responses. So I'm going to go back to edit questions. Um, as far as these settings go, if you want, you can show a progress bar at the bottom of the pages. You don't really have to. I usually just leave all of these unchecked. Um, if I only allow one response per person, which would be nice, but it does require a login. And I found that parents really have a tendency to veer away from things that they don't that they have to log into. So I just leave it open. Um, and I don't want to shuffle the question order because I want them set up just like this for this purpose. So once I'm all done with my form here, I can go ahead and um, this is what it's going to say when when the parent has submitted the form, your response has been recorded. So I can change that. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to say something like, thank you so much. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to a great school year. So then they'll see that instead. Um, I really, I'm going to uncheck this. I don't want to show a link to submit another form because they really should only be submitting it once. Um, publish and show a public link to form results. I don't need to do that because I don't need the parents seeing the other parents' responses. That would not be good. And then allow responders to edit responses after submitting. I don't check that either just because they shouldn't really need to since all of my questions are required so they should be okay. So once um, all of my questions are in there and my form is all set to go, I can go ahead and I can click send form. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate a link. And this link um, is essentially where I want the parents to go to fill out my form. And as you can see, it's a really long, scary um, link here. And people are, parents are probably not going to um, want to type that into their browser to get to this link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this link. So I'm going to press Command C and I'm going to click Done. And there are two things that we can do to get this form to parents quickly and easily. So hopefully they will fill it out. So the first thing that I could do is I could create a QR code with that link. So all I did is I went to qrstuff.com. I'm just going to type or paste um, Command V paste that scary link in there and you can see that it just generated this QR code. Now when the parents use a QR scanner um, they and they scan this QR code, it'll take them directly to um, my link so they can fill it out very quickly from there. By creating a QR code we're making sure we're, we're not even messing with any any browser or any typing anything in um, that could accidentally get you know get an error there. So this is a very easy way. Another way you could do this too is you could go to Bitly and Bitly is a URL shortener so it's just bitly.com b-i-t-l-y.com. All you need to do is paste the link in there and it'll shorten it for you. So it's created a this link you can see the old link right here and you can see the new link right here. So it's much more manageable if they did need to type it in to do it this way. And then you could even just um, post that in the classroom or I like to have parents fill out my form at back to school night, which is our back to school orientation night. So I give them time to do that in the beginning and then if they have any trouble, um, I can do it then. So once the parents um, have submitted their form, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you what happens here. Um, let's see, so here is my, where did it go? Okay, so here's my old one. Here it is, Patterson's 
Okay, so here's my the one that I just created. So I can always go back and edit that at any time if I needed to, but right next to it, it'll generate the responses here. So if I double click, I didn't have to do anything. Anytime I create a form in Drive, automatically there's going to be, um, they're gonna set up the spreadsheet for you. And it's beautiful because it has all of your information. And so as the parents start to fill this stuff out, it'll timestamp it, it'll put all of your answers in there wherever you need it. Um, and it'll all be organized in, in the spots where it needs to go. I'm going to show you one that I was using earlier to practice and to create the, the other tutorial on my blog. So this is what essentially it will look like when parents start to respond. So you'll have, hopefully you'll have all of your kids' names, all of their mom's name, cell phone number, work number, all of those good things. Um, you can also, once it's in here, there's so many great things that you can do once it's in spreadsheets. I can go ahead and I can organize, I can sort these sheets by... Um, first name, last name. There's a ton of different things you can do in here and I'll do some tutorials on that a little bit at a later time. But um, just so you can see how everything is just there and it's organized and you didn't have to deal with a bunch of paperwork or inputting information, it just all shows up there. And I've also found that this is very helpful to have because I can access this now from any computer, any, I can access it from my iPhone because I have the Drive um, app installed so I can just log into my drive on my iPhone and really quickly grab any of this information that I need. I ha always have it with me. It's all there and it's all organized. So I hope that this helps you with your back to school paperwork. Um, you can check over at my blog um, to get a visual tutorial of all these things. There's a PDF there that walks you through step by step if you need it. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me and I hope that this helps you out. Thanks so much for watching.